Wow. Amazing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing. Good evening, everyone. Good evening here at Westhafen Events and Convention Center. And a big hello to everyone at home in front of their screens. It's amazing to be here. It's going to be an amazing evening for all of us. And I'm really looking forward to present you today a new LISC. For everyone who doesn't know me, my name is Max Kordek. I'm co-founder and the president of the LISC Foundation, which I started together with my partner Oliver Beddows back in 2016. So blockchain is one amazing technology. Applied, it offers so many great opportunities to benefit our centralized world. However, there's one problem. It's not easy to apply this technology. Blockchain technology could be used in order to remove borders, to empower future infrastructures, or to bring transparency. Because of the fact that this technology is not very accessible nowadays, because you need to know many different complex fields, like cryptography, peer-to-peer -peer technology, or game theory, Oliver and I started this whole journey. We established the LISC Foundation in Switzerland with the goal to make this technology open for everyone in the world. And now, here we are in Berlin, 500 people sitting in one room just to listen to our vision and our huge achievements in the last two years. Thank you, everyone, again for coming here. <laughs> Due to our extremely hard efforts and a lot, a lot of time we've spent on this project until now, today, LISC is stronger than it ever was before. And we promise you to keep on dedicating our time and effort on development and marketing to make it really one of the biggest projects in the entire industry. We are prepared to make 2018 the best year we have ever seen yet. And in the next two hours, you will be introduced to our relaunch to a new LISC. And once again, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who is sitting here, to everyone who is watching the live stream at home in front of their screens. You are amazing, and have an exciting evening. Have fun, enjoy it, and tell everyone about what you have seen here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> now I would like to invite Christian Futter, of relevance to the stage, who will tell you more about how we achieved our new identity and our new branding. Christian? Thanks. Good evening, everybody. Everyone knows that blockchain is quite a complicated matter. Try explaining it to your parents. So Liz decided to hire an outsider like me to come, dig deep into the topic, ask strange questions. Um, and they did not do that in order to um, better explain blockchain technology to their parents. But they wanted to make clear to everyone outside of the community what LISC is, what they're doing, and why they're doing what they're doing. I'm Christian Vetter. I'm a psychologist, founder of Relevance, a consulting firm. And we helped LISC to, um, to find, to focus, and to live their true identity. 
I'd like to tell you a little bit more about how we did that, but first a few words about our approach as a consultancy. We bridged the worlds of business, marketing creativity, and empathic understanding of, of human needs. Uh, we call this approach human-centered business consulting, and we apply it to brand positioning, marketing strategy, and concepts of products, services, and user experiences. With this mindset, we carefully planned a process for LISC. We started it with a learning journey. We wanted to know what the potential of blockchain is, what the special qualities of LISC would be, and what needs users have. After we acquired all that knowledge, we combined it to create the LISC value proposition, which is the promise of how users will benefit from them. In the next step then, this was our guiding star to fine tune the product and service ecosystem so it would better deliver on the promise, to create communication ideas and guidelines that better help to tell the story, and to establish an organizational culture that supports it from within. These were all the steps necessary to deliver on that schematic process. Uh, here are the real steps. There were quite a few. I would like to focus on the, on the first part, uh, the learning journey that helped us to come up with a balanced value proposition. So as a first element, uh, we did a series of workshops and interviews with the founders, Max and Oliver, and we dug deep into their motivation, their goals, their vision. But we also talked about strengths and features of the product. As a second element, we wanted to understand main users of LISC blockchain developers. So we created an, a, a virtual discussion group on Slack and we invited 13 developers from around the world to participate, literally from around the world, from New Zealand to the west coast of Canada. And over the course of uh, one week, we discussed with them 10 different topics, um, such as their motivations, their creation process, their view on various blockchain projects, and of course, their view on LISC. During that week, participants created almost 2,000 posts full of great insight. Finally, to see the topic in a broader context, we included the view of five blockchain or digital experts uh, representing different uh, aspects like blockchain philosophy to PR and from corporate industry to startup. In one-on-one -on -one interviews with them, we talked in great detail about um, potential of blockchains, about needs of developers and entrepreneurs, actually quite an important group, entrepreneurs, and also got their view on LISC. So what did we, did we learn from these modules? Um, I'd like to um, show you some of our learnings in the form of, uh, of quotes from the participants of these research elements. So the first insight is about the benefits of blockchain in general. Blockchain will be the key infrastructure of the next economy, but the real revolution will be in the clever ways it is applied, is what a developer from our Slack group said. Users don't care if they use a regular or a decentralized app, a blockchain app. They won't notice. The product makes the case, not the infrastructure, is one of our experts was saying. So this is our learning number one. It's not about the technology we all love. It's about its application, its utility, the benefit it provides to people in the form of great services and products. What did we learn from the intentions of the founders? We want everyday people to benefit from blockchain applications. The more, the better, is what Max said in one interview. And Oliver said, we want to create a platform so accessible that any JavaScript developer 
can jump on board immediately. So our learning from this is that Lisk do want to foster the widespread adoption of blockchain. And their way of doing so is by increasing the supply side, by making it easy for developers to create more and more high quality applications. The third insight is about what developers and experts said about the strengths of Lisk. There are quite a few, but I'd like to um, pick one aspect out. Side chains connected to the main chain are a great idea. Bad code can always happen, so if something goes wrong with an app, it does not bring down the whole platform. That's what a developer said. And an expert said, their sidechain side concept means that there won't be any blockchain bloat, and apps can really scale. So our third learning from this is that, yes, people do talk about sidechains, but there is more to it, actually. Because it's not only about creating applications, it's also very much about running them. And here, a stable, a reliable, and also a scalable platform is of great value. Many insights, lots of knowledge. What are our conclusions from this? So this is what it all means to Lisk. So we started out with three questions. What is Lisk? What are they doing? And why are they doing what they're doing? And here are our answers. Lisk is a reliable and scalable platform to run blockchain applications. Lisk makes creating blockchain apps more accessible. And thirdly, Lisk wants to bring the benefits of blockchain applications to everyone. So these knowledge bits, insights, then finally led us to the Lisk value proposition, the way users benefit from Lisk. And here it is. Ta -da. We enable blockchain creators. This is our promise. This contains three aspects. For one, we're making creation more easy and accessible for those who want to do it. Secondly, we focus on the applied side, meaning we help to bring about a lot of helpful and beneficial applications. And thirdly, in there, it is if you truly want to enable creation, you should not stop at supporting developers, but you should, in fact, include also innovators, entrepreneurs, business people, everyone with a great use case or with a great idea in mind. So this is the promise, and here is what we do to bring it to life. We make it easy to build. We provide tools to manage applications. We educate about the topic, about the platform, and about the tools. We inspire with great use cases. And we construct and maintain a solid and scalable infrastructure. So all in all, this promise is authentic to the Lisk spirit. It's relevant for creators and is backed by great products and services. And hopefully, it makes clear what Lisk is to their parents. Thank you very much. I'd like to pass on now to, to Thomas, marketing lead at Lightcurve, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about how this promise was translated into products and design. Thank you. Thank you. What am I excited to be here tonight? You have no idea. Super excited. Thanks so much for tuning in at home and also for you guys. 500 people here in Berlin. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to bring two things to you tonight. I have the honor to bring a vastly improved website to you. And I have the honor to introduce you to one of the very, very first apps in the blockchain, which goes further than what we have seen in the past. We already introduced it back in November. 
the Lisk app. And we go more in detail later on. We went through several processes together with our amazing contractors and partners, Relevance and Tycho Nauten. And you just witnessed a presentation of Relevance explaining how we got to the brand identity or brand strategy we defined for Lisk. But a brand strategy is nothing if you cannot translate it into marketing, communications, into your whole outing, even it goes into the code, how the product naming is, how the product icons are. And that's where we needed Tycho Nauten, award-winning design agency here from Berlin, a team of over 10 UX designers, concept designers, illustrators, strategists, and developers. And they helped us executing everything we defined together with relevance. The very first thing I want to show you is new product naming and icons. Back in November, we showed you core, Lisky, and JS as part of the SDK, and the fourth missing component, the Lisk app. And to make everything more fitted to our brand strategy, and fitted to the logo, fitted to our color palette, and also to describe the product better than what we did before, we are introducing new icons and new naming. Core remains the same with a new icon. Lisk JS becomes Lisk Elements. Lisky becomes Lisk Commander, a command line interface. And from now on, the Lisk app, we call it Lisk Hub. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Recognizable names and icons which better describe the products our backend team or our whole developer team has been working on. We go more in detail of all four of them later, but first I would like to show you a video. Wow, <clears throat> absolutely amazing. <laughs> I have watched this video more than 10 times, and I still get goosebumps. So thanks so much for our new motion designer, Julian, here in the front. Give an applause. <laughs> it's the first, the first video out of many you will see from him, so keep an eye on our YouTube channel. Inspiring, personal, accessible, and bold. This is how we describe the website, and a new platform of Lisk. In 10 years' time, I would like to ask people to look back on Lisk, and I want them to answer the following. They were the ones that inspired us 
about the blockchain potential, I would like them to say that we were personal back in the days of the ICO. Max answered every damn question, every damn question regarding the ICO. Some of you know this. So personal, we have now dedicated community managers helping you out. You already saw a sneak peek. We are accessible. We're bringing blockchain down to the level where everybody can do it. And we're bold. And with bold, I mean we are different, or we try to be different than our peers. We get often back from the community that we're practicing more a traditional startup like marketing and communication efforts. And I'm proud of this. Because we are different, we're doing it our own way. And after tonight, you will see us growing into a platform which you cannot miss the coming years. And everything we do comes down to one single goal, enabling blockchain creators. How do you enable blockchain creators? It's not only about the SDK and the tools. It goes further. It goes further than this, enabling in any kind of format. So how to do this? Well, th the website we all know, the current website is fine. It serves its purpose, informing people what or to inform yourself. It's a website. I told Max Max, what is this website? I cannot do anything with this, no marketing with this. So we started the rebranding. So we say no to this. Something else I would like to say no to is this. <laughs> Almost in every website nowadays, and I talk about the website in our industry, have those dots and lines. What is this? I don't like this. Neither hexagons, by the way. So we say no to this. Together with Tycoon Out and the designers will say, we're not going to do it. We're going to be different, and we're going to be bold. So where do you start, then, if you have no benchmarking in the industry? And we have benchmarking outside the industry, like Christian pointed out. We can learn from those best practices. But if you compare it to a normal banking app, if you're logged in, you're seeing your own account. And if you're looking in Explorer, you can basically see the accounts of all of us. So there's some differences. So where do you start then? We didn't know. That's why we need to take an out and brief people, designers, UX experts from outside our industry to help us to get this insight. So we started with a blank canvas. We put our four products out there. We said those ones at least need to be included. But we have much more than that. We have the academy, which will be later talked about. We have the community, you guys. We have a reliable and a sturdy image. We have, of course, the decentralized application. So how does, it, how does this all tie together? And it's, it's, in a certain way, an infinite circle of connections between one and the other aspects of our LISC ecosystem. Once you pass through one stage of the LISC ecosystem, it's unavoidable to pass through the others, at least at a later point in time. They're all interconnected with each other, with LISC in the middle. And this is what we call the LISC ecosystem. So we gathered all those industry experts together, Tycoon Houghton, Relevance, and we went through different stages, different stages towards our goal. And if people think, that we started drawing logos once we announced the rebranding, that was not really the case. We started with user testing, getting insights from people. What is it that you're missing? What is it what you're currently experiencing with other platforms? We organized focus groups with our main stakeholders. Then we went to the drawing table, the ideation phase. Let's draft up the initial sketches. And I can tell you that we went through quite a few iterations, even to a point where we deleted the whole website we designed. We showed it to developers. We asked them, once again, can you relate to this? No. 
So everything went to the into the trash can, and we started from scratch. We take quality serious, quality over speed. And this is how iterations look like. Over and over and over. And I hope with this we get some sympathy for the fact that it took long. Yes, we know it took long, but I think it was worth it. I would like to introduce you today the website and the Lisk app, the Lisk Hub now called. And for the website, I point out the home page and the product page as two very clear examples where you can see what we did with the website. Together with Taikonauten, we went deeper into our user groups and focus groups, and we identified a funnel. Four key stakeholders within our industry we want to serve. Because the home page is for everybody, for all our stakeholders. Starters, developers, app commissioners, and the community. And what do I mean with starters? With starters, I mean people that are not being, they didn't get introduced to blockchain yet. We have to inform them and inspire them what it is to create a blockchain, to use a blockchain application in the future, and overall, the general impression of what the blockchain entails. Developers, of course, our main target group. App commissioners, it could be a developer or a CTO in a company trying to optimize his supply chain utilizing sidechain technology. Or the community, you guys. The current community and the future community. So exactly in this order, we designed the home page. And there it is, the home page. Let's have a closer look together. Of course, because everybody is super curious. <clears throat> this is the inspiration part, where we target the starters. We start with a video created by a top firm, video production firm in Germany called Element E, with a video which is called Create the Future, which is a different video than all those same homepage videos we have been used to see. And if I enter a website nowadays, the first thing I see is like, we are the fastest. We have the, the, the lowest fees. We have 200 million funding. We have 26 advisors. Super cool, really necessary. But let's start from the beginning. Inspiration for starters. Another moment where we take the starters and we educate them. We made designated cards or use cases or blockchain capabilities or list capabilities. And per card, we pointed out two use cases, as you can see here. Every use case, up to 12, is supported by amazingly illustrated il uh, illustrations by the designers of Taikonauten. When we go a bit more in detail for developers, we don't go so much in detail. We stay a bit on the surface, because after all, this is the home page. So here, we quickly address sidechain technology and what we're planning to do. Because this is interesting for developers, for JavaScript developers, but it could also be interesting for anybody in this room and at home to grasp what the core is, what we are doing or trying to achieve. After that, we get blockchain insights, designated cards, showcasing information and content from the academy and documentation. And then we have Max and Oliver, something which is quite bold as well. But why is this so important? Trust in our industry is lacking. It's super important for us that you can look us into the eyes tonight, but also when you go back home and have a look at the website, and not only Max and Oliver, but all the people that work on list, up to 50 people. You can look them into the eyes. You can read more about their backgrounds, where they came from, and what are their motivations to work in our industry. And lastly, the community module. A module designated for our community, showcasing our social platforms. We recently added Telegram and Discord. And there are three things I would like to focus on with marketing and communication, which is, first of all, video production. You saw the qualities of our video team. We want to go crazy on YouTube 
sharing every update in a video format. Developer update, marketing update, business updates, everything in video format, because video is in our, in our idea much more enjoyable to look at than reading through a blog. And also events. We will have curated events for curated target groups, for beginners, all the way up to blockchain experts. And here you can see the very first upcoming event. And thirdly, the newsletter. The newsletter will be curated news for you and you only to keep an update, to keep to keep updated about the LISC developments. So let's go back to the four target groups: starters, developers, app commissioners, and the community. There's a sort of hierarchy involved in this. With Taikonaut, we sat together and we said, okay, the, the home page is for everybody, but not every page is for everybody. So the second page I would like to show you is the products page, which is one of the most important pages for one of the most important target groups, developers. Let's have a look. It starts with a quote, helping you build tomorrow, because that's the essence. It's not there yet. We're getting there. Once we go down, you get introduced to a flow. What kind of flow is this? This is four steps. Four steps to go from your idea all the way to the success of your decentralized application. We got from the community back. It is not very clear how the process is being designed. Where do I start as a JavaScript developer? Where do I go? What kind of products do I use? And as you can see behind me, generate your own white label sidechain is the very first step for you as a developer towards the success of your blockchain application. The second step, customize your sidechain, utilizing your own code, possibly. Go from sidechain to application, providing it with a user interface, for example. And at last, test, deploy, and promote your app. If you click on Read Me, then you can read more. So it's all nice, but those steps are being taken also by other platforms. So why do I choose LISC above other platforms? We believe that we can coexist. There's no fear of competition between different platforms. We have different approaches, different brand strategies. But with, with LISC, you can build better blockchains, utilizing Node.js, modular, scalable, reliable, secure. We're highly independent. And last but not least, it should be effortless. Effortless is key to developer adoption. Nobody likes complicated documentation. Nobody likes to learn a new programming language. We want to make it accessible and easy. OK, fair enough. I choose LISC as a platform. What are the tools you have to offer? I quickly already introduced you to LISC Commander and other, other products within our portfolio. The LISC Hub. Short description, introducing also non-developers to our products. All supported, again, with beautifully animated illustrations. This core. This elements. And then lastly, this nano. And now I hear you think, oh, listen, this nano. In November, we announced that Lisk Nano will be discontinued together with the Explorer because the Lisk, Lisk app, at that time communicated as the Lisk app and now as the Lisk hub, already includes the functionalities of the wallet and the Explorer. But we're releasing the Lisk hub as a beta first, version first, so that's why we continue the support of Lisk Nano for the coming months before we discontinue it. So once more, all those products together Elements, Commander, Core, and then the management tool, Lisk Hub, form together the aggregation of the SDK, which we would like to call a sidechain development kit. It features a grown collection of modules for programming your sidechain along your wishes. So it's customizable. And to end the, that page, a community module again, but then tailored to the needs of, in this case, developers. <laughs> a 
And here you have a sneak peek in what the rest of the website entails. Not for tonight. Not for tonight yet. But first, we go deeper into the Lisk Hub. I already mentioned the Lisk Hub, we release it as a beta version first. And Lisk Hub is basically the first of our tools, of those four that are not exclusively designed for developers. Everybody should be able to use it to trade tokens, to, for example, make use of different bl blockchain, uh, blockchain applications. Functionalities, including, for example, the wallet, transactions, voting, explore, the things you are currently used to, but all in a one-stop shop. This makes blockchain more accessible. People would love to interact with this, and they don't get that you should go to another website, which includes the Explorer. Other functionalities which are yet not included are, for example, registering your sidechain or your dApp name, or directly get your custom token. It was already on the development roadmap back in November. Um, custom tokens will be later added to the Lisk Hub. And instead of a lot of complexity in coding within the Lisk Hub, within a few clicks, with an amazing interface, you get your tokens freshly created in your wallet, and it's free for you to distribute it among your ICO participants. This is the new Lisk Hub. So what are the features that we implemented in the new Lisk Hub? <clears throat> One of my favorite ones is the Lisk ID. And what is a Lisk ID? A Lisk ID is basically an address, but an address is the wrong name. It is an more than an address. It's an account where you can do stuff with. In contrast to the website, which is heavily on the content side and more informational, the Lisk Hub is an environment where you can do stuff. It's an application. It also doesn't look like a website. It is purely designed by us and Tycoon out and together that it looks and feels like an application. In the first place, it will be launched as a web app and later as a downloadable version. So what is this Lisk ID? Let's dive into the Lisk Hub. This is how it looks like, the Lisk Hub. And the very first functionality is creating a Lisk ID. If you randomly go around with your cursor, it aggregates all the different shapes into one single avatar. That avatar represents your unique identifier. <laughs> Through heavy user testing, we came to the conclusion that security is still a problem for most of our users. Hardcore users know that they should secure their passphrase, and it's the only way to access their tokens. And I want to stretch once more here, grab the moment to emphasize the fact that storing your tokens in a nano wallet or in the Lisk Hub is by far the most secure place to store your tokens. It's by far the most, place, most secure place to store your tokens. But it's super so secure that if you lose your passphrase, your tokens are gone. So that's why we emphasize on safekeeping, making sure with movements, swipe movements, for example, on touchscreens, that people really stand still at the moment. They know, OK, now it's the moment for me to write it down. Then we go a step further. We ask people to fill in the blanks. So you have to remember it. If you didn't write it down or didn't copy it, you're not going to go through this stage, and you don't get that nicely avatar you just created. If you do it wrong, you get directly feedback. You did it wrong. If you do it right, you get access to your nice new avatar. And there it is. Perfect. We are all set. And this is how you create a new Lisk ID. And if you thought, OK, how does that work? It's based on an algorithm together designed with our front end guys and the guys of Tycoon Auten that every single Lisk avatar is unique and based on your address. And this is how they look like.
Let's go to the next one. Sign in and dashboard. On the left side, you can sign in if you already have your LISC ID, for example. In our case, most of us have already a LISC address, in this case now a LISC ID. Another thing that come, came back from our user testing is that it's still, for people, really difficult to imagine that they should include a space between the words and that you should not put 11 words or 13, but 12. This goes wrong very often. As you can see, if you type it wrongly, you get directly feedback. Listen, this word is wrong, and exactly this word. By having 12 fields of placing it inside, you're sure that people don't forget any word or put in too much. This reduces our support tickets significantly. Then you land on the dashboard. This is how the dashboard looks like. At the moment, we have a graph showcasing the LISC versus Bitcoin. On the right side, a transfer module, and on the bottom side, your activities. That's a landing and an overview. In the right upper corner, you see your unique LISC ID, so you know you're logged in. You see the address and the timer. As I mentioned, this is more an app environment. It's not necessarily a website, although it is web-based. On the left side, again, super nicely illustrated icons for every specific feature. And on the left side, we're going to include many more and more and more features. How did the wallet within the LISC hub turn out? Obviously, on the left side, you get an indicator that you are now in the wallet. Easy as that. You have a transfer field, an overview field. This view doesn't change. You can click on a specific address or a specific LISC ID, I have to say, and you see the details of that transaction. The timestamp, the confirmations, the amount, the fee, everything within one easy overview. And because of this LISC, unique LISC avatar, it's easy to recognize different accounts. So if you're using several accounts, it's easier for you to know that you are in the right one. And sending a transaction goes all within this field, easy and accessible, with clear colors emphasizing, if you click here, there's going to happen something. It looks simple, and it is damn simple, but to make si something so simple requires much, much more work and iteration than is being expected from the first moment. Because otherwise, other platforms and other blockchain projects would already have this. Another, uh, another feature I really like is the multi-account switch. Highly requested, again, by our focus groups. In the right upper corner, you can click on your own avatar and scroll through different LISC IDs. Maybe you're a delegate and you're controlling many different wallets or LISC IDs. Or maybe you're controlling or managing other wallets from other people, your family, your friends. You can scroll through them. Again, easy, identifiable through the LISC avatar. You can easily delete them or keep them. Everything in a super simplistic overview. The Explorer functionalities. The Explorer functionalities is something which I'm super happy we integrated it into this one-stop shop, which we call the LISC Hub. You can search in the beginning. You can search for a transaction ID or a, sort of a certain address, or you click directly on the latest search because it remembers it. And again, the same overview, easy, accessible, and simple, identified by the LISC avatar. And you know you're not in your account because on the left side it says, send to this address. So instantly, you can send LISC assets to this different LISC ID. Maybe your own one, or maybe for somebody else. And then delegates. You already saw a sneak peek in the video. There is an icon for delegates, but it's not visible here within the toolbar of the LISC Hub beta. We think that making blockchain accessible for a bigger audience is also means stripping away features that are not necessarily from interest for everybody. And we believe that voting and debt man of, uh, de uh, delegates management is not something which is for everybody. And that's why you can find it at more and in the advanced, advanced features. So you can enable it 
and find it back in your feature bar. It's easy to search for delegates. On the left side, you can see how many votes you have left, how many votes you vote for in this voting round, up to 33. You get directly the feedback. On the right side, your overview. Again, everything in the same viewport. And there we go. Vote submitted. I already briefly touched upon other features that we include along the way the coming months, including custom tokens and registering or claiming your DAP name. Other features include sidechain management, custom tokens, multi-token support, a decentralized exchange, a fiat gateway to LISC, and last but not least, a ICO suite. Multi-token support is important, taking our vision in, in, into account that we're creating here a sidechain application platform. Now, why is this so important? Now we have multi-account switch with different LISC IDs. But later, you have not only LISC accounts, but you have all your sidechain accounts. And this is a real user experience challenge. We will work day and night, again, with Taikonauten to make this a absolute best possible platform for sidechain development, including a feature of multi-token support. So in one overview, this is my LISC ID, and these are my sidechain assets. You can swap them directly in a decentralized exchange, again, in this one-stop shop, which we call the LISC hub. So this is just the beginning. I got asked over 100 times, but when are you going to go live with this website and with this new fancy app? I'm happy to share with you. We bundled all our forces together. That tomorrow at noon, Central European time, we go live with everything you just saw. And the best user testing is not this specific focus group or this panel of experts, but is you. So we are standby tomorrow after 12, afternoon Central European time, to get all your feedback on the website and the LISC hub to make this the best possible platform in the industry as soon as possible. We've been working evenings and weekends, I can tell you that. And one thing that we've been working on is the LISC Academy. It's a very big project. I would like to welcome Jacob on stage, my colleague. He's the main author of the Academy. It's been an amazing journey until what we have been creating now. And I would ask Jacob on stage to explain everything what the LISC Academy entails. Thank you very much. Thank you, bro. Hello, hi, I'm Jacob. I am part of the LISC marketing team and project leads on the LISC Academy. So hopefully, at least a few people in the room will know what blockchain technology is, what it does, and why it's such a big deal. Room full of traders, okay, fantastic. So this is something myself and my colleague Michael set out to change when we joined LISC. And the platform we're looking to do this with is the LISC Academy. The LISC Academy is essentially a one-stop shop for all educational needs in regard to blockchain. So this is somewhere you can go wherever you want to find out what hashing is, wherever you want to work out how a network that's completely private can also offer transparency, or if you simply want blockchain explained to you like you're five years old. The LISC Academy is here to provide all of that. Currently, the LISC Academy is divided into two segments blockchain basics and blockchain business. So as the name suggests, blockchain basics covers the very fundamentals of blockchain technology. That includes the blockchain explained, the technologies of blockchain, so things like the P2P network, um, the values of blockchain, so we're talking about a trustless system, about transparency, about privacy, and then blockchain use cases, both current and upcoming. 
The goal of this part of the academy is to have anyone be able to explain blockchain technology to anyone else after five, 10 minutes of reading. So aside from all the detailed content and the animations, we've also got animations such as this um, to clarify and sort of solidify all the points of the academy. This is once again Julian's work, which is why it's so immaculately beautiful. So with awareness and with understanding comes adoption. And this is where the second part of the LISC Academy comes into play, blockchain business. Blockchain business, as the name also suggests, covers the fundamentals of implementing blockchain technology within a company. So that includes how you'd implement blockchain into a traditional company, be that through supply, supply chain management, how the business born into blockchain differs from a traditional business in terms of obviously funding, in terms of regulation, in terms of a decentralized workforce. Obviously, a blockchain company is completely different from a traditional business model, and this is highlighted in chapter two of the academy. Then, obviously, we're talking about cryptocurrencies. It's obviously a very hot topic. Um, we obviously want to make sure that everyone's trading LISC as safely as possible. So this will be covered in chapter three of a blockchain business. And finally, ICOs. LISC actually ran one of the first ICOs in the model that we've sort of got used to seeing on almost a daily basis nowadays. And as such, we feel we're in a position to advise these budding projects, especially considering we're going to be offering an ICO suite in our future LISC products. And as such, chapter four of the blockchain business will cover that entirely. Along with the content animations, we've got some interactive features to keep the um, experience of learning about blockchain as engaging as possible, be that animations, be that drop-down sections, a detailed blockchain glossary, it's all there. The aim is to make this academy a one-stop shop for all your blockchain needs, while catering to the modern attention span. So breaking down what we're going to get out of this academy and what it has to offer, um, obviously the goal is to raise awareness, loyalty and understanding. Um, I mean, as a Londoner, I hate to bad mouth the BBC, but I've seen countless reports by the BBC that are just completely misguided. Essentially, it's conversations about the fluctuating price of Bitcoin, and that's all we sort of get as blockchain companies. We're looking to shift the conversation away from just volatile prices of Bitcoin to a further and more comprehensive understanding about the technology. And through that, we're hoping to increase acceleration of adoption of this technology. As I mentioned, the first step to, um, to adoption is understanding, and we want to push that. As I mentioned, moving the price away from Bitcoin, and this is all being done through premium content that myself and my colleague Michael have been writing for the last few months. So it's over 40,000 words of absolutely premium content and over 50 infographics and animations to illustrate that content. And this will all be used to promote the LISC ecosystem. As mentioned, we're completely growing. We've evolved. This is a rebirth of the LISC product. And this is to keep this, pr this promotion going. It's all well and good having this beautiful logo, an amazing website. But we want it to be seen outside the conversations then that just include price. Now, obviously, the academy, like blockchain technology itself, is still very young. And there's a lot of space to grow, develop, and improve. So looking ahead, we're looking to implement a blockchain builders module. This will come with a sidechain development kit, and this will be by far the most technical module of the academy, covering how you can um, develop your blockchain applications, how you can support them, how you can release your cryptocurrencies. It's all going to be covered in blockchain builders. We're also looking at the other side of the spectrum, so we're going to start adding in gamification. Um, I'm sure everyone in this room is aware of the potential of blockchain. So as such, I feel it's very beneficial to start teaching the younger generations about it, because I mean, it's just a matter of time when it's covering all of our lives. And I feel through gamification and tailored personal profiles, we'll be able to do this. As I said, we want this to be a one-stop shop, but we don't want you to only stop there once, essentially. We want people to keep coming back, to keep growing their experience, and to keep, keep learning more about blockchain technology as the technology grows and evolves. 
We're also looking to shift away from just a tool for empowerment and enablement to an educational platform as well. And through that, we're going to be running more educational meetups with the Lisp brand, be that our JavaScript developers teaching people about how to deploy their applications, or the marketing team running blockchain meetups and workshops. We want to make ourselves as informative as possible. This is also a very early idea that we're exploring, but we feel this will massively benefit the community to have an accredited LISC diploma. So through this diploma, you'll be able to demonstrate a comprehensive knowledge of blockchain technology and of the LISC toolkit. And we feel that this could be f very useful in the future when jobs start sprouting up everywhere for blockchain technology. Having a diploma like this will be able to show future employers that, oops, sorry, that you are aware of the LISC toolkit and of the technology. And finally, um, we'd like to open up the platform to you. Obviously, LISC is very much based on community. It's great to see you all guys here. And without your unwavering support, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. Um, it's very inspirational to see you guys sort of interacting on Reddit and LISC chat and supporting each other. And there's obviously so much intelligence and awareness and potential out there. And we'd like to give a further, wider platform for people to be able to display this. And as such, we're going to be opening up the Academy to all the LISC community. As I mentioned, we're always growing and looking for feedback. So if you have any ideas about how we can improve the concept or want to start contributing, then feel free to reach out to me personally at academy at lisc.io. Or if by some miracle you manage to spell my surname, feel free to send me a tweet as well. Um, now we're going to have a more detailed discussion with a panel consisting of Oliver Beddoes, one of our founders, um, Will, and Ika, our cryptographer. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a lovely evening. Yes, as Jacob already mentioned <clears throat> in the end of his presentation, there's so much happening at the moment for, for development of LISC that we could not leave this evening pass without at least having those guys on stage and giving him, give him a face and explain more about what we have been up to with Core, what we are planning to do after the release of Core 1.0 and beyond. So I would like to introduce you, Oliver, our co-founder and CTO, Iker, our first member of the science team and cryptographer, and lastly, Will, our full stack developer. Give them an applause. <clears throat> but before we go into the panel discussion, I would like everybody to be on the same page regarding what we are building here before we go in detail. So we would like to show you another video. LISC is a platform on which developers can build, 
publish, distribute, and monetize their own blockchain applications. A blockchain application looks and feels like a regular application, but it's built on top of a blockchain or decentralized network, rather than hosted and managed by a single entity. However, a number of challenges associated with developing blockchain applications, such as a lack of tooling and frameworks, prevents it from being widely adopted. LISC aims to remove these obstacles by providing developers with an easy-to-use sidechain development kit to build their own blockchain applications. Each blockchain application runs on top of its own sidechain, a fully customizable blockchain that is connected to LISC's main chain. And the SDK is completely written in JavaScript, the most commonly used programming language in the world. So, with LISC, everyone can develop decentralized social networks, messengers, games, exchanges, storage platforms, and much more, without the complexity of developing a blockchain from scratch. Access the power of blockchain with LISC. But of course, it's a very nice video. But if you see what kind of effort our developers put into it to make this what sounds simple in the first, first glance to reality, it's unbelievable. And because we don't want you to miss out on any detail of what we have to share, Oliver and myself have an iPad to share with you the very details. Um, Oliver, welcome on the panel. Um, Core 1.0, um, it's been a topic on Reddit, the number one topic, um, for good reason. Um, back in uh, November, Max explained that the SDK is an aggregation of the tools, like I also mentioned earlier. Um, and Core being, well, it's, it's the, by far the most complex and our most important release uh, to date. Um, can you explain a bit more like the motivations and goals behind the forthcoming release of, the, of Core 1.0? Sure, OK. So uh, since LISC was created, we've been aggressively refining, maturing the code base to the point where, for the most part, the network is working effectively, well enough to support the basic set of transaction types and uh, blocks processing. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> required to evolve as a cryptocurrency. Um, when we came to approach the idea of building a platform on top of LISC, um, we quickly ran into some architectural design uh, problems and code quality issues. And uh, these originated from um, our enthusiastic but rather innocent beginnings uh, known as Crypti. Um, so Oliver, like, <clears throat> what did we want to achieve with this 1.0 release? OK. <laughs> So uh, first and foremost, uh, we wanted to learn from our mistakes and um, make LISC fit for purpose uh, as a truly scalable and accessible um, blockchain application platform. Uh, so with that in mind, um, our motivations were to confront some of these issues head on. Uh, this meant redesigning some of the key components uh, of the LISC core, which we felt in their previous form would be detrimental towards building a successful platform. So in the back on the screen, we can see the, the, the goals that were set out for <clears throat> the core 1.0 release. So to elaborate a bit further, can you guide us through those goals and what they entail? Yeah, OK. So after numerous brainstorms, code reviews, tests, and uh, a bit of soul searching, <laughs> uh, we faced up to some pretty harsh realities and came up with some immediate goals. And uh, these were the following. Two, design and implement a new API, the idea being to provide a uniform and consistent API for LISC and eventually its sidechains. To rewrite the peer-to-peer -peer transport layer, migrating LISC from a stateless protocol to a persistent WebSocket-based protocol for better connectivity and decreased block propagation times to rewrite the database layer to support fully atomic block writes, and as a result, improve blocks processing efficiency. To add a 64-byte data field to our type 0 transaction type, allowing custom identifiers 
hashes and other pieces of metadata to be optionally attached to every uh, balance transfer on the network. And then finally, to form a standards team at LISC aimed at enforcing the strictest code quality and test coverage controls and apply them to the LISC core and the other projects within the organization. Yeah, as you can see in the, the slide behind us, the statistics of, of core are, are significantly. The amount of commits aggregated is more than all the products and the releases prior to that. Um, the main question here is, what is the current development status of core? And I, I think we have some, some good news to share. Yes, OK. So the list core 1.0 release has certainly taken much longer than expected. Uh, but I would say after a number of uh, highly productive development sprints uh, and a lot of intense effort from our team, uh, we have now finally arrived at the point where all of our stated goals are now essentially complete. Woo! <laughs> The remaining work that we are now facing involves adding further test coverage and performing the required quality assurance. The goal being to ensure any regressions are identified and fixed before we release it to the test net. Exactly. So I already mentioned it before. In everything we do, it's quality over speed. And I can tell you that we organized those stand-ups in the morning, or we did it actually. We, we canceled them due to an ever-growing light curve contractor. Um, but there won't be a, mo a morning passing by when there's not one developer saying, today, I'm going to do tests. And it's not one, but it is many. So I hear Oliver saying so often, guys, we have to understand there is billions in the network. We see pro projects fill. We see scams running away with the money. And I honestly can say, although it's not my team, that we're doing everything in our best to make it the most secure and reliable platform out there. And I would like a round of applause for all the developers <laughs> that do all that effort. <clears throat> so Oliver, when can we expect an OPA beta release on the LISC testnet? OK, so we're going to start an internal alpha testing process in the coming weeks, uh, where we will deploy our own net own network of a similar size to the mainnet. Uh, here we will conduct the bulk of our quality assurance work involving stress and migration tests from the old to the new list network. Um, to take it into account, the level of testing involved, we expect an open beta release within the next four to six weeks. Oliver, as you, as you mentioned, that there's, it, took, it took us long. It took us maybe too long. Um, but once this is out of the way, guys, then we set the foundation to very fastly improved with an onboarded and ever-growing development team to work on amazing things. So what will be the first thing what we can expect after Core 1.0? Uh, on, the, on the roadmap in November, we, we saw like modularization, the, the, the fee system, the address system. The last two we will discuss with, with, with Iker as a, as a cryptographer. Mm -hmm. What's up with the, the modularization, and how does it play a role? OK, so what's coming next is probably, uh, well, hopefully, a short breather, if we're lucky. Um, but then we'll start uh, the work on the next major version, uh, 2.0. Uh, for this, I will let Ica give further details surrounding our planned protocol changes. Uh, but from a development perspective, um, we'll begin further modularization work. This will involve decoupling the various parts of the list core into pluggable components, and will form the basis of the SDK and the blockchain application platform. Yes. Iker, I mentioned um, the, 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 the fee system and the new address system are also high on the agenda. Um, we spoke already about it. We even uh, saw some, some inspiration and, and, and ideas on our Reddit, I believe. Um, as a cryptographer and our first member of the science team, can you elaborate a bit more on the new fee system? Yeah, of course. So um, we believe, and our community has made it clear on our social networks, that uh, 
to change, to, to improve the, the current fee system is a must. Uh, that's why I've been working in the past weeks in a um, uh, scalable and dynamic uh, fee system. Um, in fact, uh, as, as Oliver just, just mentioned, this new fee system is going to be the, the main priority for the, for the core team after the, the successful release of the, of the 1.0 version. And yeah, it is, will be, as, as, as Oliver said, uh, the 2.0 version. So why, why is it um, the, the system necessary in the first place? What is the main, the main pain points? We, we, we see with an ever-growing price, we, we highly appreciate it, of course. Um, but the fees are, are, are too high. In the back, we see the current fees, 25 LISC um, for a delegate yeah. registration. That, that's just too expensive. Um, yes. <laughs> so tell us a bit more. So yeah, as, as the, you may know, we currently have this static fee system where a, a fixed fee is to be paid uh, um, de uh, depending on the type of, of transaction, as you can see here. Uh, this fixed fee uh, doesn't change no matter the, the size of the transaction, the, the amount of list tokens to be transferred, or even the, the network congestion, as with Bitcoin. Um, for example, yeah, as you can see here, uh, if, if you want to perform a simple balance transaction from one uh, account to, one, to the other, uh, no matter but if you, you transfer one LISC or one million LISC, you will pay 0 0.1 LISCs as, as, uh, as the fee. Uh, if you, um, I mean, voting and submitting votes is always one LISC. And if you want to re register your account as a, as a delegate, you will need to pay 25, 25 LISCs. Um, so initially, initially this, this static fee system was working, working perfectly fine, no problem, and, and it allowed the, 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 usage, the, use, the active usage of our network even for these, uh, the, the smallest users. Um, when I say smallest users, I mean those users with a, uh, a small amount of LISC tokens in, in their account. Uh, yeah, however, with this massive growth, this massive surge of cryptocurrencies in, and, and of course their consequent uh, increase of, of price, especially for least token, this situation has changed. It's, it's, it's no longer the situation. And now uh, I would say those small those users with limited resources are struggling to, to, to be an, an, an active part of the network. And when I say active part, I mean, um, you know, uh, voting a delegate, downvoting the delegate, or if they want to, to, to become a, a delegate. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's, that's, why, that's why we have this new fee system in, in the pipeline. And this new fee system is going to be dynamic, as I said, and dynamic in the way that the fees are going to, uh, they are going to depend on different, several factors, all of them within the LISC ecosystem. And this way, uh, it will allow a fair way to participate in, in the network. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, since it's a rebranding event and everything is in in the focus of a brand identity. Um, we don't go further in detail what the algorithm entails. You, you, a couple of weeks ago, you had a session with Max and Oliver discussing it. Um, further details will follow uh, on our social media and, and a blog, for example. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's a number one priority after 1.0 is out of the way. Um, if, you, if you say that um, we truly want to open up the LISC platform to, to anybody, also with people with a lower amount of uh, LISC tokens um, to participate in the network, um, does it mean that well, voting becomes cheaper? Do you think it will have an effect on the current depot system? Yeah, so, well, I would say first, well, it was, it's a consequence of the, the, the let's say, the, the main feature of, of this fee system is that the, chi the, the, the fees are going to be way cheaper for, uh, for every kind of transaction. And I'm talking about orders of magnitude cheaper in most of the situations. And this first thing, obviously, the first implication of, of this is that uh, those small users that I mentioned before, they will have a, an, an easy way a, a, a to participate in the network. And yeah, as you mentioned, the, the other, the, another direct consequence of, of this new fee system is um, the voting system. The voting system is, is going to be affected. Um, so for uh, now that we, when we implement this fee system, uh, these cheaper fees will allow the, the, the voting system, the voting dynamics, to be more fluid, to have a greater fluidity in the network. And yeah, believe it or not, this, mm, this fluidity 
is very important here for the for the for LISC for the project, uh, because uh, for delegate proof of the stake systems, as as you were saying, uh, to have a, a fluid, a democratic voting system, it uh, will ensure the decentralization of of the of the project, and and yes, decentralization is a. Uh, I would say is capital in, in cryptocurrencies. Yeah. yeah, it definitely is, and, and it's, it's, it's a hot topic. Um, what we choose back in the days to go for the DPoS system, it has its, its pros and its cons, obviously, and um, with this, it, at least it becomes easier to, to vote. Um, mm -hmm. We also have in mind that we, well, we're expanding the, the, the science team. Uh, Iker is the first one as a cryptographer. Uh, we announced back in November that we will go hire more and more academic people, more people in the range of, of Iker's work, to fill the science team up to five people in the coming months. Um, and you already addressed, well, you addressed the consensus algorithm. This is also something which further on the line this year um, will be optimized. Um, another thing which is more uh, towards us now on the timeline is, uh, is the new address system. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a pretty unique address, um, as you can see behind us. Um, can you explain us a bit um, why this is needed and what we can expect? So yeah, again, again, I have to start with uh, that we, we believe that a major, uh, thoroughly designed address system is a key point for the long-term success of, of the project. And here, uh, when I say success, uh, I mean in terms of uh, scalability, usability, accessibility, and of course, uh, security. Um, yeah, at the moment, yeah, you can see it here. Basically, uh, a LISC address is uh, around 20 digits number and decimal, decimal base, so from 0 to 9. And we have this L attached uh, at the end as the LISC identifier. Let's take a, take a step back and explain to people talk, how does this address is being generated. Because I, I believe there are a lot of people tuning in tonight and also sitting in the room um, that would like to hear it from a cartographer, how this fairly simple but important um, generation is being accomplished. Yeah, so I would say the, the high-level process to generate this address is, is, is simple, as you said. So first, yeah, you can follow it here. So first, the, the, the user will, will choose uh, his passphrase. Well, in fact, in the wallet, this is generated for the user, this passphrase, to, to avoid the unsecured choice, uh, of, of, as, as you, we saw it in, in your presentation, with, the, with the, uh, like moving the, the mouse. So we avoid this way. Uh, unsecured choices of, of passphrase. So once that this passphrase is uh, generated, uh, it is hashed, and it is uh, is the input of a elliptic curve, elliptic curve signature algorithm. This signature algorithm will uh, output two things. First of all, the 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 public key, sorry, the private key, and then the public key of the of the user. So we take a tiny bit of of this, a part of this public key. We process it. We, uh, yeah, you pr we process it to generate the the address, the 20 digits number that we we saw before. Yeah. And that's it. That's that's the whole process. And as you can imagine, I mean, it has uh, several advantages. First of all, it allows uh, a greater a great accessibility for new users, for newcomers. Uh, as well, it is human readable, so it is really easy to catch for the human eye. And yeah, in other words, you can say that the current address system is both is easy to manage and is uh, user friendly. Exactly. So I didn't hear any any negative side on on the current address because there is at the moment also no negative side of it. Um, but everything we do is it the website or or the Lisk Hub or um, the changes we make on the protocol level of of Lisk Core. Everything we do is with the, with the sidechain application platform in mind, and this is also I, I guess for for the for the address system. Um, so it sounds like a good system for now, but why do we want to change it, and what can we expect? Yeah, of course. So yeah, if it was perfect, we we wouldn't be uh, considering like improving it. So yeah, it has some limitations. It has some limitations, and that's why we are uh, improving this other system. So I would say the first limitation is the, that those around 20 digits uh, address that we have now it has a limited uh, entropy. This means that uh, when thousands or even millions of users are accessing the, the network in, in the future, this current address system will struggle in terms of security and usability. And, and here I'm speaking about uh, address collisions, uh, very similar addresses, uh, like 
typing mistakes when you input the uh, one address or whatever. Um, and yeah, I think. Yeah, so it's important to that with, with the sidechain development in mind that we change the things because, uh, well, the network is live, so implementing changes along the way is much dif more difficult than if the network is not live yet. Um, let's move on to, to Will. Will, um, you were working on, on two products. Uh, they're now uh, renamed and rebranded. Uh, are you happy with the, with the naming? <laughs> I like the names. <laughs> um, the first one you are working on together with other developers, of course, is um, uh, the newly rebranded Lisk Elements, previously known as uh, Lisk JS. Can you explain us a bit more what it is exactly? Sure. Lisk Elements is a JavaScript library which gives developers access to Lisk-related functionality. So there's a helpful list of constants that we use, such as the time the network was originally created, or the static fees we have currently in place. There are some cryptographic functions. There are functions related to creating, signing, and verifying transactions. And it will also let you interact with the API of a node that's running on the list network. It's in JavaScript, which means you can use it on the back end. So you might have a server that's processing data coming out of the list blockchain, or on the front end, for example, in a wallet application. Exactly. So um, in the back, you can also see the summary of the, of the, of the components. Um, so what is the relationship to core, for example, like the, the correlation? Yeah, so obviously, you have all of this functionality on the nodes, which are running list core. But as a user, you don't necessarily want to be connected to the network, and you don't need to be connected to the network to perform some functions. An example here is creating and signing a transaction. Uh, you don't have to be connected to the network to do that. You, these are deterministic functions. You can even be entirely disconnected from the internet. And in this particular case, there's a security benefit that you might want there. You could have a device that's never connected to the internet, never exposed to the dangers associated with that. You sign your transactions locally, and then your passphrase is safe. Obviously, once you need to broadcast that transaction to the network, have it included in a block. At that point, you need to get in touch with a node, and Lisk Elements will also help you with that connection. Yeah. Um, so where is Lisk Elements currently used in our ecosystem? It's used in a bunch of places. Um, it's used in the new Lisk Hub. It's used in Lisk Nano, obviously. We use it in our command line tool, Lisk Commander. It's used by various exchanges that hold Lisk. And our community members are also using it in their own projects, which is something we really want to encourage and support. Yeah. Um, so we, we elaborate a, a tiny bit on, on also like what, what core um, is becoming after, after the release of the, the 1.0 uh, release. What can we expect from uh, Lisk Elements to become? Is there also like such a thing like modularization? Exactly. So just like with Lisk core, we want to modularize Lisk.js. It has, as we saw on a previous slide, and this one here, no, you're fairly distinct regions of functionality. And we want to make those separately installable packages while still providing a wrapper package, which will include all the default functionality that you're used to with ListJS. This will enable you, if you're, say, a sidechain developer who wants to use the same cryptography as on the main chain, but you have a different set of constants, for example, then you can just pick and choose which parts of Lisk elements you think are relevant to your application, ignore the bits that aren't relevant, and use your own codes where necessary. Yeah. So modularization um, to be implemented after 1.0 is out of the way. The same goes for, for elements. Let's dive a bit deeper in, um, in Lisk Commander, uh, another well, developer-facing facing product. Um, what is Lisk Commander? It's the, the, the previous Lisk key. Um. Exactly. Lisk Commander is the command line interface which wraps around Lisk elements functionality. One of the reasons we've picked JavaScript for the Lisk project is that it's a very popular language. But not everybody necessarily wants to learn JavaScript just to get started with Lisk. And even people who do know JavaScript already don't necessarily want to write a script every time they want to perform some basic task. So with Lisk Commander, you get a basic set of commands, which probably 
all developers will want to use at some point when they're interacting with the Lisp network, and a nice, clean text interface. There's a, an interactive mode, which is nice for manually checking things or one-off tasks. And there's a non-interactive mode, which is more appropriate for automating tasks or if you want to use Lisp Commander in combination with other tools. And then as output, you can see either a nice, pretty table, which is human readable, or JSON, which you could then pipe to other tools. Yeah, let's have a look here in the back how that turns out in reality using those commands. Um, what can we expect from this commander then in the future, talking about one of our other products? Right. So we want Lisp Commander to be the primary interface for DAP development, ultimately. We'll have packages within the overarching project of Lisp Elements for creating sidechains, things like that. And then once we have the functionality in Lisk Elements, we can provide a command in Lisk Commander, which wraps that functionality and provides a nice interface for developers to get going from the command line with sidechain development. So we envisage a situation something like this. You open up a terminal. You start Lisk Commander. You type create genesis block. It prompts you for a few pieces of information and spits out a JSON file. And that JSON file you can then use when you type your next command, create sidechain. Exactly. So very interesting for the developers among us. I hope <clears throat> um, it's also clear for the non-developers among us because, well, yeah, it's complex. Um, uh, more, very, very more complex than the video that may seem in the first place. But these are the necessary steps in order to achieve what we, what we envisioned. Um, Going back to Oliver, Oliver, um, I quickly, when I revealed the website, uh, the products page in more particular, we, we pointed out four steps to make clear like, what can people expect um, from idea to towards their success of the and the deploy of the application and the success that comes with it. Um, this is the following. So, can you guide us through the four steps um, and elaborate it further on the ones I left out earlier on? So, the, with the first one is generating your own white label sidechain. Sure. So uh, developers will first uh, download the SDK, uh, most probably in the form of an NPM package. Uh, for example, by typing the command uh, npm install lisk-sdk, uh, this package will provide them with uh, the three elements, lisk core, lisk elements, and the lisk commander. And these combined together uh, will enable and developers to bootstrap their application um, using Lisk Commander. Exactly. Um, let's go to the second step. So customizing your sidechain. Um, with the great work of Taikonaut, we visualize this step uh, with the block falling into, into the bigger block. Um, what does it mean, customizing your sidechain? OK, so initially, uh, the customization will be limited to um, transaction types and their resulting behaviors. Uh, but eventually, it will allow developers to create their own custom tokens and uh, reward mechanisms. Later on, uh, there will be further options available, such as the ability to choose a different uh, consensus algorithm. Exactly. So this is where the interesting parts happens for the developers. So together with the, the Light Curve Blockchain Development Studio, and I help already, uh, Jacob pointed it out, with the knowledge and the inspiration and the inter entrepreneurial drive of all the people here and the people back home Together, we, we should do it. I mean, it's not only up to, to Light Curve, of course. Um, the third step is, is from a side chain towards an application. People, right, this, this is based on questions we got from people on Reddit and, and also in person. What is the difference between a side chain and then an application? Because there's a step missing. OK, so uh, the list side chains are essentially API driven back end applications, the same as the list core itself. Um, so developers will have the freedom to choose how their, user how their users will interface with their sidechain, uh, for example, by developing a, an iOS or Android application. Yes. The fourth step is um, it's further on the timeline for developers testing and deploying their app. Can you elaborate a bit more on that? Sure. OK. So. Um, at LISC, we're uh, 
well, we care a great deal about testing. So uh, the SDK will provide an out-of-the-box out framework for writing automated tests against your sidechain code. Also, we'll be developing some standards and best practices for testing blockchain applications effectively. And uh, when it comes to actual deployment of your sidechain, uh, List Commander will, have, will, will have allow developers to uh, deploy their sidechain using just a few commands. Yeah, exactly. Sounds very exciting. And um, yeah. if people want to read more about those steps in further detail, of course, I showed earlier on the products page, we can click on read more. And um, we really spent some time in crafting this tech, so I really hope that we answer a lot of questions tonight here with the panel discussion. Thanks, guys, for participating and answer some hot questions. Okay. Um, if you want to read more about it, of course, feel free to reach out to us like you already did. And of course, check out the new website tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon time, um, Central European time. I would like to thank Oliver, Iker, and Will for the time here, and I hope it was insightful. Thank you. And now I would like to give the word to Max Kordak again, who will continue today's presentation. Thank you. Yeah, come on. First, we need to change the stage again. So let's wait a moment. Lucas? Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Maybe one round of applause for our help us here. Thank you very much. <laughs> <coughs> okay, this just went very deep. Who understood all of it? You want a job? Please apply. It's super complicated technology. It's going deep. But I think it's worth it for humanity that we progress and make it available for everyone in this world. <laughs> so I really hope you love what you've seen until now. And now I'd like to give you a few insights, very brief, about the LISC Foundation and about the company we heard quite a few times about today already, Lightcurve. Let's start with a financial overview for the LISC Foundation. So what we normally did last year were monthly or quarterly financial overviews. But we were so busy building this amazing platform so busy with board meetings, with discussions, and so on and so forth, that I personally just couldn't find the time for it. But here is an updated financial overview so that you know how much money the foundation currently has. So we still have over 8,000 Bitcoin, Bitcoin Gold, and Bitcoin Cash. We have nearly 9 million LISC tokens. We have over 60,000 gigabytes of Byteball and around 2 million Swiss francs or worth of Swiss francs and fiat currencies. That puts the current LISC Foundation holdings to far over 300 million Swiss francs. That's amazing for a startup of our age. And we can use that. So in 2017, we just spent around 5 million Swiss francs on the whole project. But our current projections estimate that this year, with our huge growth, we're going to spend approximately 25 million Swiss francs with an exponential growth in the next two years. So it's going to be insane. You can believe that. 
I would also like to use this moment to introduce you to a new initiative we just recently started to pick up, and that is to sponsor open source projects. So in order to strengthen the LISC infrastructure and software quality, we have began to connect with the project leads of these open source libraries we are actively using within the LISC protocol. To mention here specifically our socket cluster developed by John. One round of applause for him. <laughs> and PG Promise from Vitaly, who is currently watching the live stream. He can't be here in Berlin at this moment, but our hearts go to him. So one round as well. <laughs> So it's also an honor for me to tell you here, everyone and at home in front of their screens, that both project founders have also joined the LISC HQ and will from now on start contributing regularly on the development. This all happens in order to make sure that our code is of the highest standard and of the highest quality you can just possibly imagine. But it's a lot of work, and we are not that many people at this moment. We need more help. We need more hands. So I'd like to point out that we are currently also hiring for our LISC Foundation based in Zug, Switzerland, and we're looking to fill positions out of business, operations, and finance. If this profile just applies to you and you want to move to Zug, please message us at careers.lisc.io. As you might already know us as, as fellow LISC fellows and community members, we're collaborating with many, many different contractors around the world, like Tycho Nauten here from Berlin, Expand Online from <laughs> um, <coughs> from the Netherlands, Vexman PR from New York City and Dublin, MME, Element E. Bitcoin Swiss and many more. Our main contractor and most important one already was mentioned quite a few times today. It's Lightcurve. And Lightcurve is heavily involved in the platform's development and marketing to make sure that it is the highest possible code quality and that everyone knows about it. They also helped us to organize this huge event and I think it's amazing, and I want that everyone here of the team just knows that we really appreciate that. And one big round for them as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> so talking about light curve, the LISC Foundation has extremely high needs and requirements, and they're growing every day. And that's why Lightcurve had to scale up massively in 2017. It grew to over 40 full-time employees of development, engineering, cryptography, marketing, and many more fields to work exclusively on the LISC project. And the plan of the Lightcurve company is to double the size of employees this year alone. And scaling up for Lightcurve is just so important for the continued success of the LISC ecosystem that I just want to emphasize it today once more that, Li that Lightcurve is hiring many, many people, especially cryptographers and backend developers and Q&A engineers are currently in high demand. So if this profile suits you, suits you any well, please send an email to careers at lightcurve.io based here in Berlin. So that was it with the company update around the financials, around our new initiative of sponsoring open source projects and the careers or hiring part. And for me, today's evening, it's extremely exciting. It's our first big LISC event. And so far, I really, really like it. 
And so you can make sure, or you can be sure that in the future, we will do many more of those. Let me give you a short summary of what we've seen today. So in the first second when the event started, you saw Julian's super epic logo reveal video. This was amazing. It gave me goosebumps when I saw it. The first, second, and third time, it just gives this vibe of our boldness. I really, really love it. Then myself got on stage to open up the keynote and to give you a few information about Oliver's and mine vision and the reason why we started this whole journey. After that, Christian from Relevance came on stage to tell you more about how we achieved the branding and the identity in this really, really long process of user groups, interviews, and more. Then Thomas of Lightcurve came on stage to show it to you, to show you the product. Here also amazing, uh, amazing videos were involved, pictures, details of the page, and I think it's truly an amazing end result for the hard effort we put into that. And you can be sure we're going to make it even better from now on. After that, Jacob from Lightcurve introduced the LISC Academy, which is our way to educate people who are not familiar about blockchain technology today, but we believe everyone should be. So here's the LISC Academy for these kind of people. Of course, also later on, this will evolve in order to satisfy sidechain developers to know everything how to develop a sidechain on LISC. Then just now, we had this super technical panel discussion I think it's very important for us to be sometimes technical. I know our strategy is to be the startup which tries to be accessible, but not every parts are accessible of blockchain technology. And if and this, the community wants it, of course, and we can fully understand it, and if we need to describe something technical, we do it. We have, after all, this amazing team of over 20 engineers of over 10 people in marketing, and many, many more contributing to this project on a daily basis. And now I'm here on the stage as the last run again, to, and I told you a bit about the financials, about the open source initiative, and about the hiring. And it's just a pleasure for me to be on this stage tonight. I can't emphasize that enough. So. To tell you more about the new LISC, about what was involved in this long process to coming to this point, was really worth it for me to show it to you on this beautiful stage tonight. Thomas already mentioned it. Everything be will become available tomorrow at noon, Berlin time. And just make sure to check it out. It's amazing. Now, we would like to spend our time to everyone here in this room. Together with you, we want to enjoy our evening. Back in the, uh, in, there's another room, if you leave this one, with drinks, with a nice bouquet, where you can really stand together and enjoy the evening together with the whole LISC and Lightcurve team. But before I go, I'd like to welcome everyone who is contributing as a contractor to LISC to the stage. That will be quite a, quite a few, but I think it's going to be an amazing picture to just see how many people are working on the project. So Lightcurve, please come on stage. Vexman, come on stage. <laughs> Expand Online, come on stage. Tycoon Outen, come on stage. <laughs> everyone. I really hope the stage survives. Oh, we come here. Huh? <laughs> um, great. Do we have everyone? Let me see. Tycoon, Vexman, Expand Online, Lightcurve, Relevance. 
Amazing. So these are all the people who are making LISC a reality. Amazing. Oliver and myself, in the name of the LISC Foundation, we really want to thank every single individual who is currently on the stage and all of those who can't currently stand on the stage. A lot, and like we just want to give our biggest gratitude to, to all of you to support LISC, to work on LISC so hard every day, and to give you all. I just love it what you're doing. Keep on doing that. Thank you so much. We would also like to thank you, the whole team of this event location. Thank you so much for being such an amazing host and for providing us the means to make tonight's event possible. Thank you. <laughs> I would also like to thank Every single individual here in this room, you guys are amazing to coming all the way to Berlin for LISC. This really shows me what kind of power blockchain technology has. Also, a big thank you to everyone sitting at home in front of their screens. Again, one more round for you guys. Thanks. Of course, for everyone who is here today, we have a small present for you in the form of a goodie bag with a lot of cool stuff inside. I, I'm sure you will all like it. You can grab it downstairs. Make sure to be fast before they're gone. No joke. Everyone will get one. Promise. I told you already, this is not the last event. Last event. We're going to do another huge event this year. And I just want to thank you so much for attending tonight and see you all at the next LISC event. But before we leave all the stage, um, we're going to show you one more thing. <laughs> I wish you a lot of fun watching it, and see you at the next event. Thank you so much. Okay. Have you ever realized how little we actually know? Think about it. Every day we buy products without really knowing how they're produced. We have the most advanced justice system in human history, but still face fraud and corruption. Medical discoveries happen every day, but in a serious emergency, our medical records are still hard to access. Smart homes are on the horizon, but can we really trust them? In this age of information, we have sacrificed our privacy. We have no clue what is happening with our personal data. This is where we are today, but progress is already happening in the form of a technology with revolutionary potential, LISC's blockchain technology. Imagine applications that tackle our society's challenges piece by piece. When you buy something, you know exactly where it came from, what it contains, and how it got to you you will be able to make emerging technology trustworthy. We could reduce corruption by bringing transparency into our world. When you need it most, you will be able to share your medical records in an instant, safely and securely. And finally, you become the one and only owner of your personal data. To accelerate this innovation, we created LISC, a blockchain application platform that enables you to easily create and distribute your own blockchain applications. Access the power of blockchain. LISC.